And I was in the living room, and all of a sudden my aunt stopped, turned and looked at me and said, Isaiah, you need to become a priest. And immediately my parents gave me the biggest I told you so faces in the world. And I went, okay, I think this is something God wants me to do. Hi, my name is Isaiah Jillick. I'm a seminarian studying for the Diocese of Bismarck. I originally graduated from Trinity High School in Dickinson, North Dakota. I went through, I'm in the second year of college uh, at seminary. Um, I joined right out of high school. Um, I went through Catholic school my whole life. I was raised by a Catholic family. I uh, went to uh, Sunday Mass uh, and uh, we had nightly prayer to, night prayer together every night. Um, over the summers uh, when we didn't have school, we do uh, morning prayer as well, uh, confession every two weeks, just really a, a beautiful, firm foundation uh, that God provided me with to begin on. Um, uh, going through Catholic school, it was a great and great experience. Uh, however, my freshman and sophomore year, um, uh, I hit some rocky parts, uh, not through the fault of any but one but my own. I went agnostic for a while. Um, I wasn't really sure if God existed, uh, nor did I care. Um, so I just kind of drifted through those years, uh, finding distractions where I could from this, this kind of emptiness that uh, was left inside from uh, putting aside the only source of fulfillment. However, in my sophomore year, um, it was uh, the spring semester of my sophomore year of high school, uh, I went to the vocation jamboree, vocations jamboree that uh, you Mary puts on. Um, it's where a bunch of uh, nuns and brothers get together um, and speak about uh, their uh, religious orders. Uh, I had gone to uh, get out of school and get free food. Uh, I'd go only to the booths that had candy. I'd take it and get going. Uh, until this one booth I was passing by, um, a man called out to me and he said, uh, hey kid, would you like a free book? And I said, sure, I'll take a free book. So uh, he brought me to a billboard, a trifold uh, board uh, that had a bunch of random pictures on it with random in images. And he said, first, can you point out to me which image reflects your spiritual life right now? And I pointed to an empty fishbowl, uh, indicating that it was kind of non-existent. He said, OK, and where are you hoping uh, that it will go? Point to a picture again. I then pointed to a picture of a man standing and someone running away from that man. And I said, I'm kind of there, and my faith is leaving completely, and I, I just don't care. And that day, he gave me a copy of the book Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis kind of a basic philosophy book on the existence of God and why Christians believe what they believe. Um, that night, uh, I ended up starting to read the book, and my eyes became opened uh, behind the logic and the fundamental truths that lied behind the existence of God. And so after that, I started looking into this faith thing again. And then, once again, I came to believe that there indeed existed a God, but at that point, I, I still didn't care that he existed. I didn't want to pursue anything, and that kind of had to deal with the faith. Going into my junior year, uh, then, uh, we had just gotten a new uh, chaplain, uh, Father Jordan Dosh, who is now our vocations director at Trinity High School. Um, and he was a fantastic religion teacher in that he taught us why Catholics believe what we believe. And for the first time, I started going, this makes sense. This is the truth. And I started to get this fire in my soul, this re-enkindling of my faith. I started to pray again. I uh, paid attention in Mass. I went to confession, not out of an action of faking it for my parents, but actually wanting to go. He also had us read a book uh, called St. John Paul the Great, a book on St. John Paul II. Uh, and in reading that book, I started to feel strong desires to live the life that St. John Paul II had. Um, and uh, at the time, I just thought it was a really good book, not knowing there's something deeper going on there. Then uh, later on, um, the semester of my junior year, uh, Father Dash was gone for a week, and he played us a movie called Carol, the Man Who Became Pope. And in this movie about Carol Wojtyla, St. John Paul II, there was a moment in which I saw a priest uh, in communist Poland ministering to the people in an attic hidden from the communists. And I had this sudden movement of the heart to be like that priest who put aside everything to share the light of Christ to others. And in this moment of desire, 
I looked up towards the sky and I said in my mind, God, if you want me to be a priest, I'll be a priest. And immediately, like water, this peace flowed from my head to my toes. Something I had never experienced before. I wanted to stand up and jump and dance all of a sudden. And then I became very afraid. For I had just gotten back into prayer life and I didn't really know what this all meant. So I started going to the chapel every day. I said, okay, God, you've got to let me know what it is that you want me to do. Um, I started asking him for neon signs uh, that he wanted me to be a priest, which is improper discernment. Um, <laughs> but um, I asked him quite frequently, and soon the chapel became the highlight of my day. Uh, I'd count down the minutes till I got to sit in front of the tabernacle once more, lying prostrate on the ground, uh, excited to find out what God had in store. Um, and God ended up giving me several big signs that this was the route he wanted me to go. Um, at one point, I just finished a band concert in which I was wearing uh, black pants and a black button down and a white undershirt. And I just unbuttoned the top button of the black button down. And so just a little bit of the white undershirt was showing. And two of my friends were walking towards me and they started to laugh. I said, why are you laughing? And they said, we thought you were a priest. Another time I was uh, touring college campuses with a large group of students. And throughout uh, walking through the campuses, I thought in my mind, no, not seminary. I want this. This would be so much fun. I got to do, do the college life. And then my friend, in, walking in front of me, I, uh, uh, nothing provoking him, stopped, turned around, and looked at me and said, Isaiah, you're going to be a priest. Uh, and so through these, I really started to take this seriously. But something I always struggled with was the real presence in the Eucharist. So I asked Father Dosh one day, where do Catholics get the belief that this piece of bread is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ? He then pointed me to John chapter 6, the Bread of Life discourse, in which uh, Jesus repeatedly says, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. He says it something like five times. And even when the people say, how can this be? God doubles down and says, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. If you would were to see me in my true form, you would believe. And many people left him that day. I then felt like the apostles when Jesus asked, will you two leave? And the apostles said, where would we go, Lord? The next day we had all school mass and for the first time I went forward to receive communion actually believing what I was about to receive was the body of Christ. As soon as it hit my hands, I broke down in tears. How else can one respond when they realize the infinite God is in their hands? I ran back to my pew and covered my uh, face with my hands in hopes no one would see. But there was kind of the pinnacle of my reversion into believing the truth of the Catholic faith. Uh, but I still wanted more. I still kept asking for a neon sign. And that summer, I was going to Rome. Uh, with uh, the junior going into senior class, um, like all the Catholic schools do, uh, and offer. And I thought, that's where I'll get it. I'll get my neon sign in Rome. I'll have a little Italian girl run up to me and say, you're going to be a priest. I even Google translated, you're going to be a priest in Italian, so I, I could understand when this happened. I go to Rome, nothing. Bone dry. So I come back confused. What does God want me to do? I thought he wanted me to be seminary. He didn't give me the sign I wanted. What the heck am I to do? And so up to this point, uh, my chaplain, Father Dosh, and both my parents had known that I'd started feeling stirrings towards the seminary. Um, my parents were the best when it came to helping me discern whether or not God wanted me to go to the seminary. They didn't immediately jump up and down and say, oh, our son's going to be a priest. They said, okay, let's see if this is something God wants you to do. So after coming back from Rome, I told them just how confused I felt. I was like, I don't know what God wants me to do anymore. And my, sa my mom said, what more do you want? And I said, I want someone to come up to me and say, Isaiah, you need to be a priest. To which my mom replied, Isaiah, you need to be a priest. I was like, oh, you don't count. <laughs> um, but I decided then for the month of August, um, leading into my senior year of high school, every day I'd pray that God would give me a sign that he doesn't want to be a priest. So August 1st, I get up uh, out of bed, I go on my knees and I say, God, today, give me a sign that you don't want to be, me to be a priest. That evening, my aunt and uncle were over visiting and my mom was in my, uh, with my aunt in the kitchen preparing food. 
uh, preparing the food, and they were having some conversation about the food I enjoyed or something. And I was in the living room, and all of a sudden my aunt stopped, turned and looked at me and said, Isaiah, you need to become a priest. And immediately my parents gave me the biggest I told you so faces in the world. And I went, okay, I think this is something God wants me to do. And so after that, um, I contacted my uh, chaplain, Father Dosh, once again. I said, yes, I, I think this is what where God's pointing me to. He then got uh, me in touch with the then vocations director, Father Waltz. Um, I began my uh, application in January, finished it by February, and I was accepted uh, April of that year uh, to study for the Diocese of Bismarck. Um, so that's my vocation story. Um, <laughs> that's about it. It was a crazy wild ride. I'm eternally grateful for uh, the ways in which God moved my heart in some dramatic ways, in some ways that I didn't even mention here, to pull me out from this, uh, from being turned into myself, to this finally looking outwards towards others, and to this brightness and peace and joy that he's instilled in my heart in this time at seminary. Thank you very much. <laughs>